introduction to macroeconomics. We have already learned microeconomics. What is the meaning of microeconomics? We learned micro means small. That means microeconomics is the study of small part of the economy, like individuals, individual farm or individual firm, industry. What all individual things will be studied in the microeconomics? Now the term microeconomics. The word meaning itself micro, we already learned the meaning of word micro, micro means large in the sense that microeconomics will be studied the large economic parts. Otherwise we can say microeconomics is the study of economy as a whole, whole part of the economy all together we study in microeconomics. It analyzes causes of major problems such as high unemployment, inflation, low wages, low economic growth etc. Now what is unemployment? We all know we already learned that unemployment means where there is a situation there is lack of job opportunities, lack of employment opportunities. Employment in the sense that in economics we say each of the factors are not employed properly whether it can be labor, whether it can be land as well as we can say money is utilized, not used, utilized properly. This all comes under unemployment of factors. And inflation, what is the meaning of inflation? Inflation is the change in price level. Prices are increasing as well as when you say high price level and the other thing when we say that the value of money is decreasing. That is known as inflation. The commodities prices keep on increasing. It will be difficult for the economic growth of the country. So inflation is also a major problem which is related to the whole economy. Not only that low wages. Wages means which all factors have to get the income. That is less mean that will be also problem for the economy. Low economic growth. So these all things will be studied under macroeconomics. It deals with both short term and long term fluctuations. Long term in the sense that long period of time we already learned where there are some factors are means all the factors will be variables there. Short term means some of the factors are fixed and some of the factors are variable. So this way macroeconomics will be studied even short term as well as long term fluctuation changes in the economy will be studied under microeconomics. Now let us see what is the reason emergence of microeconomics. Microeconomics is mainly given the name for we know J. M. Keynes, J. M. Keynes, John Maynard Keynes is we say the, is the pioneer of microeconomics and he has written a great book, uh, General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. So we can say microeconomics is because of the work of J. M. Keynes in his famous publication the general theory of employment, interest and money, microeconomics achieved greater significance because it gave answers for the great depression of 1930s. Great depression, we know only earlier time, there was a great depression in 1930, great depression in the sense that there the economy made fluctuation or fluctuated in the economy, the banking system came down and there was less money supply in the country, everywhere depression has come. So this was been overtaken by the help of microeconomics. After World War Second and until 1980, economic policies were primarily aimed at countering inflation and unemployment. So for coming up of this, yeah, the economy has to work till 1980s. So till that time, they are only pointing on inflation and uh, unemployment. So that Great Depression is the reason we can say it's the emergence of microeconomics. Now let us see the nature and scope of microeconomics. What is the nature? What all scopes are there if you study in microeconomics? We can say microeconomics study about the aggregate demand of the economy. What do you mean by aggregate? We know aggregate always refers to the total. What is the total demand in the economy? We know the consumers, if the people want different commodities, what is their demand? 
So demand is a very important factor for the economic growth of the country. So the first thing that microeconomic studies is aggregate demand. When the demand is there, what is the next comes under that? Aggregate supply. How much supply is there to fulfilling the demand of the people? So total supply, how much? High level of output. How much will be the high level of output so that both the demand and supply will be managed? Full employment. How to achieve the full employment of resources? We say there are many resources man-made resources as well as natural resources are there. These all the resources should be employed properly, then only we can achieve full employment. So full employment is also a reason so that we can achieve economic growth. Next is the price stability. Price stability in the sense that price should be always gone in a stable manner. There should not be inflation. High level price should not be there. There should not be deflation. The level of price should not be going down too much. So this both will affect the economy so that there should be price stability in the economy. That is also our nature or that is also we study in the microeconomics. The same way sustainable balance of payment. This balance of payment is related to the foreign trade. When we trade between different countries, what is our balance? Means when we are keep on importing the commodities, we will not be having proper balance in our hands. So balance of payment will not be there. So how can we achieve proper balance of payment? So that is also we study in the microeconomics. Next is finally, this all will be including finally to rapid economic growth. So rapid economic growth also studied under microeconomics. Now as we continue the policies of the government mainly the fiscal policy. What do you mean by fiscal policy? In fiscal policy the government will be finding making policies on government revenue, government expenditure as well as the government debt situation. So these three will be studied under fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is also an important objective comes which under microeconomics. Next is the monetary policy. Monetary policy is related to the money policy, RBI, what kind of situations, what kind of control RBI taking on money situations. Now we know only the many notes, currency notes have been stopped, new notes are been coming up. This is also comes under monetary policy of the RBI. This also studied under microeconomics. Next is the exchange rate policy. What do you mean by exchange rate policy? That means changing or rate of change takes place when we, when we convert one currency into other currency. What is the rate that change exchange that is known as exchange rate. We know in our currency rupees 62 for 1 dollar we say that is the exchange rate 1 dollar cost 62 rupees. So there also different policies fixed exchange rate policy is there fluctuating exchange rate policy is there managed fix is there. So this way this also decided by the government according to the situation. This also we study in microeconomics. Next is the employment policy when only different kind of employment policies will be made by the government. This also we study in microeconomics. This also affect the whole economy. Next is the price and income policy. Obviously there will be there are different policies on price as well as income for different factors. This all also study in the microeconomics.